If we talking looks, sound hooks, I'm the littest one. Just sent your wifey five attacks. So fresh and fresh and clean. I keep it beaut on that Don Julio. Cause I be eating weed. Hey you guys, so we are back today for episode two of my new podcast, Pretty Pert and Potent. So again, the only rules are you must be high if you are attending, and I am still feeling, feeling good. I'm fucking dead. So at any rate, um, today's episode is a little lighter. Episode uh, episode number two is a little lighter. Um, and I'm trying to balance my content out like that. Like if I do something heavy, the next thing I want to do, I don't want to be doing too much. You know what I'm saying? Heavy stuff. Um, give myself like a mental break. So, although this this episode gonna probably be a struggle too. Oh Lord. Okay. So at any rate, um, as a black person growing up, one thing that I've been fond of is my ability to remain myself. Um, black or not black, but uh, pop culture, specifically, like, white pop culture. It's, it's weird. Like, I feel like black people consume it. Like, certain stuff like Mean Girls, I feel like black people, you know, they a lot of people know about Mean Girls. But certain stuff, they'll, like, turn their nose up at. Like, I'll never forget, and this is why I think we got to be careful with how we treat people. Like, granted, now I'm over this. I'm grown. It is what it is. And I actually used to feel bad for men who, like, didn't feel comfortable wearing pink or didn't feel comfortable listening to female music uh, or women in music or whatever the situation is. But now I'm like, boy, fuck you. Like, I mean, this you missing out, child, because you over there trying to be the uh, quote unquote a man. You know what I'm saying? But I'll never forget when my cousin made a remark or, or actually the, multiple times, you know, like I was raised in a house, uh, household where I wasn't allowed to watch like Family Guy and stuff. And it was, it was so, it was not like implied. It was very overtly like you're not allowed to watch stuff like that. To the point to where like when I would be watching it, like when I'd be at a cousin's house or a friend's house and they watch that, I would feel bad. I would feel like extremely guilty. That's how much that was wired into me. And I mean, in hindsight, a lot of that stuff should not be watched by children. But neither here nor there, you know what I'm saying? The complex was still there. And for my family members to judge me because I watched Disney Channel or watched Nickelodeon, like that was kind of annoying, you know what I'm saying? Even though they would sit there and watch the shit as I'm watching it, you know what I'm saying? So that was something I was just, I was kind of demonized for growing up. Maybe it's more of like a male thing. Um, since, you know, men are supposed to watch football and shit because we all the same. <laughs> um, more on that in the Pretty Boy Privilege video. But at any rate, or um, Pretty Privilege as a Man, yeah, I want to keep... I'm trying to get that title right. <laughs> but at any rate, so with that being said, pop culture wasn't always looked at in the best light, but I'm glad that I remain resilient and hey i like this and i'm fucking with this and one of my favorite guilty pleasures is pretty little liars so at any rate i um when i look back now it it give me what the fuck is this but and actually comment down below and let me know if i'm kind of jumping the bush when i say this or whatever but I would reckon to argue that Pretty Little Liars' most strongest attribute was the community it created. You know, the storylines, I would say, excuse me, up until about season two, everything was good. After that, it was like a hit or miss. Um, I still think season three kind of had that spark. I hate, I hate the Lodge Fire. Oh my God. The, be- the only thing that saved the Lodge Fire was Allison being alive. First of all, y'all already know I'm black as fuck. Why the fuck is all y'all black characters dying, bitch? Y'all kill off Beyonce motherfucking niece. I think Maya is Beyonce niece. Um, or Bianca. But at any rate, whatever she is to be, bitch, how dare you, bitch? I mean, it has nothing to do with the show. Like, Lyndon James, whoever came up with that needs to foot up their ass. This episode is brought to you by Disarona Moonshine. I'm finna be in someone's bed tonight. Let me stop. (laughs) But nah, for real. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. All right. So I'm about to hit the timer. Three, two, one. Hell, even when I look at Allison, like, there there was a clear misdirection of her character. They never know if they want her to be good or bad. 
And we literally went back and forth from she's A, she's a murderer, she's innocent, she's a church girl. She like there was no type of oh my god, Sasha just Y'all, I am the last black man to go up the bat for a little white girl like that. But Sasha Patricia deserve better, child. Hell, we deserve better. And I love, I love the complexities of the character Allison Delorentes. But as a person, she was fucking terrible. And all the blonde curls and blue eyes in the world is not gonna make me forget that shit. That bitch was a menace. She was the train wreck that you cannot stop watching. Now, I can admire the villain in a villain to one like as far as one that commits like I can admire that shit you know but I'm not gonna see her say she was a good person I don't even think her redemption was believable you know what I'm saying like they just never knew what road they wanted to take her in it almost came off as more as she's getting better at hiding how bitchy she is versus she actually feels bad for what she's done I will say when they were talking in like episode four I think and they were discussing going back to school and all that shit. I do feel like there she wanted to genuinely make amends. But hell, even in the end, she didn't apologize for the Jenna thing. And then, let me think about a way they could have tied that in. They, She could have said, you guys, the reason why I'm not apologizing to Jenna is because... And she could have went into the story about when she ran into Spencer's house while I think Emily was there and she was wearing that Letterman's jacket and it was implied that she had got molested and then they had that weird ass scene in the mirror where her face morphed um, and she said the apples tasted bad or whatever, the Spence, the Hastings have the worst apples, whatever. That scene, they she could have confessed to us that she was molested at that party and said that's why I don't feel bad for blinding Jenna you know and and, I, and I'm not saying use that as an excuse for why you blind her but she could say I don't feel bad for it because of that you know what I'm saying even though my initial reasoning for doing it was bad like there was no accountability in her character in in I mean, she apologized, but it was like for the most minuscule stuff. You know, she apologized to Emily for telling her those kisses were practice. But baby, you probably the reason why she was so scared to come out in the first place. And it didn't help that her parents, oh Lord, child, Pam Fields came a long way now. Hell, Pam Fields had more character development than half of the main cast. That's fucking, oh my God, the ghetto, the trenches, the trenches. And another thing that's disturbing is why are there more illegal relationships than non-legal? Because why did Spencer forgive him so quickly? Like, bitch, I'm tired of everybody in the show being like, I was blackmailed to do it. Bitch, you couldn't come have a conversation with me, bitch. Like, you... Like, y'all would say that. Like, it would make it acceptable. And it doesn't. Yeah, uh uh-uh. No. Um, you wanted to be in a doghouse for a little bit more longer. Um... Another thing that was weird, they made Melissa... Now, nah, don't get me wrong. That girl was wrong for slut-shaming her sister because she couldn't keep her men's in check. I'm sorry. And that's another thing, too. Like, the the show made it an effort of pretty much slut-shaming Spencer when she was a fucking kid. So, it's really weird the way that they played on adult-children dynamic relationships. And, yeah, that in some instances, like Zach, when he groped Hannah, that was supposed to be seen as wrong. But when you're aiming your show towards a kid's audience how are they supposed to differentiate between Zach and Hannah and Ezria literally the couple that got a fucking wedding like Ezra should be in jail that's another thing too why we over there Ezra should have been a that fucking book situation pissed me the fuck off like there's such a thing as a um shocker that's not fucking of value and and then that shock had no fucking value whatsoever that shit pissed me the fuck off thing and let me say this i like emerson in the cute surface level aesthetic i think sasha and alice um ashley i mean <laughs> sasha and shay mitchell do a great job of having on show chemistry and if they want a menage, I'm a, let me relax. So anyway, better what I was saying though. I think that, you know what I'm saying? They pull it off well, but because the writers didn't add enough storyline to the Emerson storyline. Oh, those bitches were happy. 
that you were gone. And that really pissed me off. Like, girl, child, okay. <laughs> so at any rate, um, like I said, even with CC being A, I wouldn't have had a problem with CC being A. It was the execution of it. You know what I'm saying? And and they maybe could have even nah nah the transgender thing, the reason why I would not accept that is because they did it for shock value. It was just random placement. I think Emily is also just random LGBTQ fanfare. Like, that's what she's there for. They don't even really do a good job of developing Emily. She's another person who um, I watched, I can't remember her name, but she did a video essay on Emily, and she was like, even her love examples, from the most praised with Allison and her, Emerson, to the ones most hated, her and like Paige, which I know there are some Paley fans out there, which that name makes me cringe, but you know what I'm saying? I know there's some fans of both out there, but uh, Paige do get a lot of hate. But I look at all the relationships Emily's had, and I was like, the only ones that are not really mildly, or no, severely toxic are her and Maya. You know what I'm saying? Now, Maya still, I, I watched a, more of an analysis, or more of the analysis, of okay, Maya was still kind of problematic, but definitely not in the ways that Allison was, or Paige was, or Talia was. Um, I just, I don't under, child, the trenches, the fucking trenches. Oh my God, Sarah Harvey, what the fuck was that? What the fuck was a Sarah Harvey? Oh my God, they should just left that bitch dead. Hell, I saw this fucking theory and it was like Sarah Char Sarah Harvey is Charles and Cece is Bethany Young. And I ain't gonna lie, I was like, you know what? If they was gonna go with the trenches the thing, this would be a big one. <clears throat> let me stop, let me stop, let me stop. That point. What happened to Mona being the fifth liar? You know what I'm saying? Um, I did see a video that broke down like the time frame in which um, Allison had turned 18, or not Allison, but Sasha, to where she could, you know what I'm saying, do more stuff as far as being part of more episodes. So maybe that has something to do with it. But even then, like I said, Ali and Mona did not have to stay at odds. Hell, they could have even made it to where they got along and then one influenced the other and they started playing the game together. Like, there were so many more interesting ways the show could have ended than Hello, Spencer. Hello, <laughs> Spencer. Why is she so fucking, like, aggressive with this shit? Y'all, go watch Mike's mic. Like, that motherfucker is funny. Hello, Spencer. Like, why the fuck? At any rate, oh my God, we deserve so much better. I just, oh Lord, and I thought an hour was enough time. That might have been too much time because I'm 22 minutes in and I am fucking exhausted. Or not 22 minutes in, but um, I have 22 minutes left and I, I'm exhausted. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can break down and fix. Um, Ezra, jail, prison, lock up disgusting hey you guys if you would like to hear the rest of this podcast please check me out on anchor.fm apple Podcasts, spotify and all other podcasting platforms thank you for listening